All right, so welcome everyone to Potter's Ask the Training webinar. Uh, today we're going to be covering the PSN 106, PSN 64 conventional power supply. If at any time you guys have questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box. I will get to those either during the presentation or at the end. Also, before we get started here, uh, a few of the pieces of information or PDFs I'm going to be covering are in the materials section of the webinar, so you can download those at any time or download those afterwards. Uh, but again, I'm going to open them up and cover them. Uh, so again, today we're going to be talking about the PSN 106 power supply. And really, the PSN 106, 64, uh, they're really the same type of power supply. The difference is amperage and how many outputs. So the 106 is 10 amps, six outputs, hence the 106. Uh, the 64 is uh, six amps and four outputs, which is why we call it the 64. So again, a few things I'll be talking about, and I'm going to bring these up in a PDF format. I'm going to try and get these PDFs that I'm going to bring up and show you on the website, hopefully eventually, but unfortunately they are not there yet. So I think the biggest questions that comes to mind for people is how to do the dip switches. That's probably number one. How do you change the dip switches or how should the dip switches be changed when it comes to the power supplies well a lot of that depends on how you're connecting the power supplies up or what's triggering them uh, so for instance the first one i brought up here is getting a common sync from a fire alarm control panel so for for this one it's basically setting the dip switches for the individual NAC circuits making sure that trigger one uh, or making sure they're set up to be activated by trigger one. So there's two input triggers on every power supply, N1 and N2. So in this case, for this PDF, uh, again, we're triggering it from input one. So we gotta make sure those individual dip switches are set up for that. And for this, I'm gonna try and go side by side screen so I can bring up the dip switch settings too. I apologize, I must've accidentally paused my screen. So hopefully you can see the screen now, I apologize. Uh, again, if you guys do have questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll back up for one second here. So what I was referring to is the individual NAC options of the triggers, as you see here. And then the one that confuses people is when they read follow DC power. They don't really understand what that is. And again, the DC power is configured by dip switch bank S8. So if you look at the drawing here on the left-hand side, you have dip switch bank S7, then S8, and then your individual NAC dip switch banks. So if I scroll up here, that's dip switch bank S8 right here. This is where you're gonna see the DC power config. Again, that's where you can choose whether it's constant power or door holder power. While we're on this screen here, the other thing I'm going to talk about is this trouble memory. So one of the nice features that uh, these conventional power supplies have is this trouble memory. If dip switch 8 on bank S8 is on the up or on position, and you get a trouble on this power supply, and say that power supply goes back to normal status, the LED is still going to keep flashing rapidly for you. So that way, if it's an intermittent trouble, you can go to this power supply and determine, okay, it's NAC3. That's the one that's been going in and out of trouble. Uh, and to reset that, it's as simple as taking dip switch eight to the off position and putting it back to the on position. Again, so I always highly suggest people to uh, turn the trouble memory on. Uh, I think it's an advantage for technicians out in the field when it comes to troubleshooting. Uh, so again, that's one of the things that people covered. The Class A, Class B, I think that's pretty self-explanatory for people. Unless you do have a question about it, I will answer that. But I think the the one I was talking about, again, is the, the setting it up for the individual triggers. The other thing that confuses people at times is how to set up for your synchronization. So, and the reason why that confuses people is you have the dip switch bank S8, or sorry, S7, and then you have the individual NAC options. So S7, and I'm gonna scroll up on this right-hand screen again, 
if you look at this, this actually defines the incoming synchronization. And this is where people get confused sometimes. So if you know you have a system sensor sync triggering the power supply, you're going to set DIP switch bank S7 up as a system sensor sync. If you know it's a Gentech sync, again, set that up as on, on, off. Uh, so again, this is telling you what your incoming sync is. If you're using something other than one of these sync protocols, you can always set it up as normal. Uh, what normal is, it's basically like a pass through. So it's going to take whatever that uh, sync generator was, you know, maybe it's a, a simplex panel. Uh, it would take that simplex sync and just redistribute it to these individual NAC circuits. But once you set that up as normal, you also still have to go to the individual NACs. and set these up as pass-through or input tracking. So again, you'll set it up as normal on bank S7, and then on the individual NACs, you have to set it up as pass-through. And it's going to take those other manufacturers' sync protocols and pass them through to the individual NAC circuits. So that's one of the common things. And then, of course, I told you Bank S7 was your incoming uh, synchronization. Then you also have your outgoing sync that you can set up as well. So you could be triggering it with a system sensor sync and then have a Gen 6 sync as your output sync. Now from here, I'm going to go back to these other drawings. And again, as mentioned earlier, uh, these drawings, I put these in the material section of the webinar. Uh, so if you want to download these, you certainly can. And uh, these are actually a nice, uh, I think they're nice to have. And I'm going to scroll out here. So what we have here is, again, this one demonstrates coming from a uh, control panel with the common sync to individual power supplies. Uh, in addition to the cabling with that, it also tells you what dip switch settings you need to essentially set up. So, again, it's going to tell you set up the dip switches to activate trigger one on each power supply. Then down here, it's going to tell you to synchronize the NAC circuits and set dip switches one to three on S7 to match the sync from the control panel. Again, so these are a great thing. So, again, if it was you wanted to match the sync output from the control panel of System sensor, you can go back to that other screen that I just had up, which is found on the website. And then now you say, okay, I want that to be off, off, on for the first three dip switches. Some of the other diagrams that we have up, so the next one would be coming from a uh, another power supply notification circuit, so another power supply NAC. Uh, and really, this is going to be set up fairly similar uh, to how it is coming from a control panel. So, again, one of the nice things is we tell you how to set up your dip switches, and I'm going to scroll out here. But as you see here, it's still the same thing, coming into input one and triggering it the same way we would on the other scenario. The only thing that's really different here is the fact that the NAC circuit from power supply one must be set for synchronized output because this is what's going to provide your common or master sync for power supplies two and three. And this is what people get messed up on a lot of times when they're coming from a, uh, a NAC circuit like this from one power supply trying to sync up to other power supplies. They always forget to set the synchronized output on that first power supply. Again, that's what's going to provide your synchronized or synchronization throughout the rest of the system. And hopefully I'm not going too fast. I know this webinar wasn't going to take long. Like all of our other Ask the Trainer webinars, they're normally a uh, quick hit uh, type of thing, 15, 20 minutes uh, to do common questions that people have. So as a trigger, you could use a PAD100RM if you wanted to, but I would say uh, 
normally what people are going to do, and that's a good question, actually, we have another wire diagram kind of set up for your exact scenario, but you could use a PAD 100 NAC module. And again, the nice thing is we did this wiring diagram. That's why I'm highly encouraging people on here to download these. Uh, so we have this NAC module, which you power directly off the power supply, so you don't have to provide power from anything else but then it also triggers your power supply. And it's just off the SLC. The other nice feature about this, because this is NAC modules off the SLC, this is actually gonna provide supervision to your power supply as well. Uh, so that way if you get a trouble on this power supply, it's gonna put this NAC module into trouble, which in return gives you a trouble on the control panel. Uh, so I would say, uh, Daniel, in your case, I would say use the NAC module instead of the relay module. And again, just like the other scenarios coming out of here, so if you did have other power supplies, you would do this master comments uh, sync signal to the other power supplies. And the other thing I'm gonna say is uh, a lot of people tend to overthink these power supplies, uh, but really they're they're pretty straightforward. Uh, and the only thing I would say, I know we're we've been trying to make changes to the manual, but uh, that's why I'm trying to highly encourage people to take these drawings off of here because these drawings are going to be better, I believe, than what we actually have in the manual on the website. So good good question as far as if you install the PAD 100 NAC, do you have to install a supervisory module? And, and the answer is no. Uh, I mean, you can if you want to, but really with these power supplies, what it does, if you get a, uh, a trouble, uh, it's actually going to give you that trouble on this input uh, as well. So the main reason why these are kind of here is you can use this, there's two separate boards here. So the, there's the left-hand board uh, which has these trouble contacts on there. Then there's the right-hand board, which has all of your notification circuits. Uh, the reason why these are here is because this left-hand board can be purchased as a standalone 10 amp power supply. And in that case, you would have to monitor these. So again, hopefully I've answered some common uh, nuances with the PSM-106. One of the things we're asking from people is uh, feedback as far as what Ask the Trainer webinars would you like to see in the future? Uh, whether it be uh, application, you know, maybe certain applications, elevator recall. Uh, again, feel free to type those into the chat box. So again, the difference in these three documents is one, I'm showing you how to wire and triggered off of the NAC module, which is the one shown on the screen right now. This one is coming from a common sink from the uh, the first power supply. So the first power supply is giving you a common sink and then triggering the other power supplies. And in the first document that I showed you, this is getting our synchronization from a fire alarm control panel. And then passing that through as a common sink to the other power supplies. So I know they look fairly similar, but they actually are a little different. Or I should say differences between them. So I know someone just said, hey, what about doing a smoke control latch to the trainer? Uh, and so we actually just added a, another smoke control webinar. And let me bring up the screen here. Uh, if I can get this going. So you may have missed it, but we've actually added a couple other webinar sessions coming up. So if you go to our website, then webinars, uh, we just added a new PotterNet webinar uh, coming up August 25th, so about four weeks away. Uh, our next series of regular webinars, then we also just added a, another smoke control webinar. Uh, so again, uh, smoke control webinar is available for everybody to watch. But again, it's smoke control is only available to IPA dealers. 
but it still doesn't hurt to watch the webinar and have a better understanding of what an IPA control panel uh, can deliver for you. For additional questions about the Potter product, please contact technical support at the phone number or email address shown on the screen. And as always, don't forget to follow us on social media.